thank you all for joining this virtual uh, platform uh, so now with the permission of the chair uh, i mean i would like to welcome dr c srijit to deliver the monthly lecture for this month organized okay. under the aegis of structural geology and tectonic studies group india in association with the department of geology banaras hindu university welcome dr srijit thank you uh -huh. before i hand over the stage to dr srijit i would like to provide a, a brief introduction about today's speaker uh, mainly for young students and other listeners uh, dr srijit earned his bsc and masters from university of calicut kerala subsequently he qualified net set and gate examinations and joined university of kerala for phd under the able mentorship of dr g r ravindra kumar who is now in national center for arts science studies rivan tiruvananthapuram uh, dr srijit completed his phd in 2015 and subsequently served as senior research fellow and guest lecturer before joining as an assistant professor in ms ponani college university of calicut and he has also several international research experience uh, he has also secured several recognitions from national and international forums and he has published more than 10 research articles in journals of international and national repute and several other papers in national symposiums and workshops his main research interests lie in petrology geochemistry precambrian crustal evolution and planetary tectonics but recently he is also working on the heritage significance of natural stones and is also acting as a correspondent of the heritage stone sub commission iugs unesco so now i would like to request dr srijit to take the stage and present his talk on the evolution of lower crust in the kerala condalite belt southern india insights into contrasting styles of geodynamics and magmatism during precambrian Dr. Sridhar, please. Thank, thank you, thank you, Scientist, uh, for that uh, kind words. Uh, uh, good evening, all. Uh, I am very much uh, delighted to be here uh, with these uh, respected members of uh, SGT SGI. Uh, this seems to be a wonderful group uh, who uh, actively uh, give these kind of lectures for the youngsters. Like, for example, we people are sometimes listening to that, and uh, it is very interesting always. and uh, i am very much thankful for all of them for inviting me for uh, such a uh, wonderful forum i may present uh, now uh, please check whether it is uh, uh, yeah please go ahead. yeah is it visible now yeah it is clear yeah. okay so my present day topic is uh, what i am uh, going to give a glimpse on the evolution of lower crust in the kerala condalite belt and their uh, significance in the uh, precambrian geodynamics especially the sort of magmatism based on the magmatic styles the different styles of magmatism that has occurred in uh, different geological periods will provide some insights into uh, the contrasting styles of geodynamics operated in precambrian in the kerala condalite belt so uh, we will have a look through through the southern indian geology um, especially for those uh, younger students who are not very familiar on this uh, southern indian geology and uh, we will see what all are there in the kerala condalite belt uh, what sort of rock types uh, their field relation geological setting will be discussed uh, with uh, their geochemistry and petrogenesis uh, some mineral chemical aspects and their metamorphic phase relation then all this will be synthesized to Uh, give an inference on the crustal accretion model, and we will also uh, bring out some geodynamic evolution model for the KKB. I also have to put some uh, future perspective because uh, we have eminent uh, structural geologist over here, uh, which is uh, really lacking in here. So in this terrain, uh, this terrain needs to uh, search for more of uh, structural aspects. when uh, looking through the geology of southern india one when one can very easily recognize two distinct terrains uh, to the which is bisected by which is uh, actually separated by an isograd orthopyrex in isograd usually regarded as the firmer line to the north of firmer line we have the arkin granite greenstone domain uh, the dharwar craton which have provided much of our understanding on indian earth evolution indian crustal evolution And Dr. Sri, Dr. Sujit, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, can, sorry, you sorry. can you can you can you use uh, I mean the uh, 
and cards, sir, uh, to show the locations and all for everyone. Okay, okay. Uh, is the cursor is visible? I can't see. Oh, yes, now it is okay. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, this is uh, the blue line which demarcates orthoperoxin bearing rock assemblages to the south and non orthoperoxin bearing the granite greenstone, actually, the upper amphibolite to amphibolite facies terrain, which is usually called as the uh, Dharwar crater. And uh, our interest more mostly lies on this uh, lower po most portion of India. Uh, which is a high grade nice granulate domain, which is mixed up with the granates, uh, nisic domain, nisic rock units, and uh, the so called charnakites, which is usually uh, called as the southern granulate terrain, southern Indian granulate terrain, which have undergone granulate facies metamorphism at different episodes, different periods in uh, different locations. When uh, looking into the crustal blocks of uh, southern granulate terrain, the granulate terrain itself have got different crustal blocks. Uh, usually, we can have three major blocks like Salem, Madurai, and the Kerala Conrad Belt. Within this Salem block, we can have minor uh, hillocks or uh, that have got its own evolutionary history, its own geochemical signatures. Some uh, some of them are really distinct in their metamorphic patterns too. So, like uh, Nilagiri, which have got a ultra high pressure metamorphic domain within uh, within the Salem block, that is the one of the uh, interesting terrain which shows a deep seated subduction and exhumation and coming to the madurai block now madurai block is a little bit complicated because this is uh, a 2016 map even after that people have modified it into uh, western madurai domain eastern madurai domain northern block southern block like that but uh, on a major uh, geological feature what we can see is they have got three major hills like uh, the anomaly uh, Kodaikanal Massive, Kadama Massive. Even within the Kodaikanal, Kodaikanal Massive is a uh, good location where we can have uh, ultra high temperature metamorphism along this uh, Karur, Kambam, Pinao, Tichur shear zone. Ultra high metamorphic uh, rocks are well exposed. And below that, we have got uh, our uh, today's topic uh, that is Kerala Contralite Belt, which have got three major uh, lithological units. I will show in the next slide. Okay, it will come. Now, uh, to have a comparison of uh, different crustal domains in the SGT, uh, we have uh, Salem, Madurai block. We will be having the same kind of lithological units, like most of mostly they are uh, composed of orthonices, that is the magmatic charnel, interventic nices, granitic nices, hornblende biotite nices, and a uh, little bit ultramorphic complexes are also there. And uh, uh, they also have got alkali granites of the Pan African age. In the Madurai block, the same kind, which have also have meta sedimentary belts, meta plates, quartzite, calcite, and marble bearing assemblages, and along with the granite and oxide meta gabbro, the later undeformed uh, magmatic assemblages in both this terrain. And KKB, Kerala Condite Belt is a typical unit, uh, which is in the extreme southernmost portion of India, which was once united with uh, uh, other. Uh, Gondwana fragments, uh, including Madagascar, uh, Sri Lanka, Antarctica, and so. Uh, this have got uh, the KKB have got metamorphosed TTGs and the granites. Earlier, it was all regarded as a uh, particular condolite belt, metapelitic belt. But later on, our own studies have uh, uh, provided basic insights into this is not a uh, fully made up of condolite or metapelitic terrain, but it has actually have uh, packages of TTGs and granites which have formed earlier in the uh, meso arc into uh, proto early Proterozoic time. And uh, these are formed in a Paleoproterozoic arc setting. There, these TTGs and granites uh, have formed in a Paleoproterozoic arc. Uh, probably this is an, a good indicator of early earth tectonics, early earth uh, subduction type of tectonics we will see through. And the meta sedimentary package in the Kerala content belt includes condolites, the typical condolites, garnet biotite, uh, sedimentite, plus or minus graphite bearing assemblages. Then uh, they have got paranyses, garnet biotite paranyses, calcilicates, marbles, and quartzite. And mostly the Panmudi uh, unit, the uh, extreme northern portion of uh, Kerala Contlate Belt along the Achenkovil shear zone, in between Achenkovil shear zone and Tenmela shear zone, they are, they are uh, northwest southeast trending parallel shear zone about 30 kilometers widely separated. That particular domain is actually called as the Panmudi unit. 
where we will be finding mostly the abundance of uh, calcilicate marble quartzite along with uh, some uh, migmatite, uh, megacrystic K feldspar bearing migmatite. And in the center portion, uh, uh, sorry, the Achenkovil unit is on the northern portion, the center portion, that is the Ponmudi unit. Ponmudi unit is actually having uh, the typical condolites, uh, silimonite bearing of paranaisic assemblages. And in the extreme southernmost portion, what we have is a granulite massif, uh, the Nagar coil unit. Um, but uh, structurally, they do not show much variations. When we start from south to north, uh, it, uh, the structure shows some steepening when we are approaching to the shear zone region. Otherwise, uh, they are actually uh, having the same uh, trend, same pattern. Almost all of them are um, the nice fo foliations trending in the northwest, southeast directions. And uh, uh, talking about the significance of KKB, why KKB is so important in uh, global studies, uh, that actually uh, uh, having a central portion where the Gondwana fragments have met, uh, at least uh, 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 the central portion can be assigned to uh, the KKB region, which uh, assembled with Madagascar at one side and uh, the highland complex of uh, uh, Sri Lanka on the other side and Africa uh, uh, and uh, part of Antarctica were also yeah, in the assembly. And uh, this is a key area for studying formation of the supercontinents. And uh, that is why uh, their uh, position, uh, the neoprotoric supercontinental position and uh, their amalgamation and dispersal can be easily understood by studying the KKB. And more than that, this is one of the best exposures in the globe to understand uh, the granulate facies genesis. We have got uh, very good locations of uh, charnakite in the making, uh, the so-called incipient charnakite um, locations. The arrested or incipient charnakite locations are well preserved uh, within the KKB. So it will uh, give us uh, some inference on how, uh, what is the uh, role of fluids in um, granulate facies metamorphism, what is the pity conditions of granulate facies metamorphism, and uh, how the crust transform, current biotite, nice crust transform into a, a gran granulate facies uh, lower crust. On a general aspect, we will go through the geology and structure. Um, geologically, this is predominantly uh, metagranitoids. The, the, uh, the development of metagranitoids, of position in the different ages. Uh, we also have supracrystal rocks, mostly pelitic and semi pelitic sedimentary sequence. Uh, we have got uh, migmatitic garnet biotite, codierite of paraxinase. That is a different unit, uh, which I've got codierite. That is a later formed unit uh, due to. Uh, during the exhumation process. And uh, another typical geological unit forms the organizers, KFLs, potassium spar megacrist granites, which have transformed into nisic units, and uh, the typical charnakites, and the later stage alkaline granites and pan uh, granites of pan African age. We are actually missing the later stage uh, um, magmatic events, like uh, um, the basic dikes are very much uh, on the younger age basic dikes are not seen um, in. KKB, not so far reported in the KKB. And uh, when uh, talking about the structure, uh, four phases of deformation have been identified on um, KKB. Uh, the general northwest, southeast, uh, nice foliation first phase of uh, deformation phase, uh, which uh, changed into an upright inclined folds, uh, creating a D2 deformation, which have got two trends north, northwest, south, southeast, and uh, northwest and southeast trending uh, actual planes have been identified. Then uh, the third phase uh, is due to the reorientation of D2 folds in relation to a large scale um, structure, mark, probably due to the final phases of uh, uh, continental assembly along uh, the Achenkovil suture. And mostly these are restrictive. These deep three deformations are mostly seen along the Achenkovil shear zones. And uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, the dipping of actual planes of such folds are uh, really um, increasing when we start from south to, when we look from south to northern part of uh, Kerala Contain Belt, what we can see is the uh, actual planes are uh, systematically increasing their dipping pattern and uh, they verge with uh, the Achenkovil uh, shear zone in the northwest, northeast direction. Okay, now, uh, the crust forming and metamorphic imprint, uh, imprints that we can find from the are uh, when we look into the model ages, uh, the Achenkovil units uh, uh, lying between the Achenkovil shear zone and uh, Tanmela shear zone have got a younger model age uh, that is about 1.5 to 1.2 billions of years. Uh, 
Um, these are represented on the okay, feldspar megacrystic granites. And uh, Panmudi unit, which uh, have an assemblage of uh, metapolitic rock, uh, granite, uh, meta granitoids of tonalitic composition, uh, granitic composition, and coderite bearing is all such things together constitute a larger um, model age distribution starting from 3 billion of years to 2.1 billion of years. Whereas in the case of uh, Nagar coal unit, we have got a more restricted uh, uh, model age, which is uh, lying between 2.6 to 2.1 billions of years and uh, these all are on the uh, mandel extraction age when we come to the crystallization ages uh, the paleo mostly they have got a paleo so 2.1 to 1.8 billions of years granitoids uh, that is a main lithological component of kkb and uh, the achinkovil unit uh, the potash feldspar megacrystic granitoids they have got a mesoproterozoic uh, uh, 1.5 billions of years um, age and we also have neoproterozoic alkaline dense, which is actually undeformed uh, and metamorphosed the younger uh, granitic intrusives. Then uh, the metamorphic age, two major metamorphic events have been recorded. Uh, one is in the early proterozoic, uh, that is in the uh, high temperature event with the upper of, uh, reaching up to upper amphibolite species on 1,800 millions of years, and the Pan African, the uh, Pan African, which have been imprinted in most of the southern Indian crust. And when uh, looking through uh, some field uh, photographs, you will be able to identify they have got uh, a migmatectic fabric, which is uh, again ducted, indicating of a ductile deformation. And both the lycosomes, mesosome, melosomes, and the melt phase, everything have undergone uh, deformed. They have deformed along with the Nisic fabric. And uh, when we classify the metagranitoids, we can have metatonalites, which is having a sodic affinity. And the metagranates, which is mostly having a potassium affinity, and the organizers mostly granitic in nature, um, potassium rich in nature. Uh, they have got a separate petrographic entity like a, a potash wells for megacrystals seen within them. And uh, these leucosomes, early studies have identified these leucosomes are formed by biotic dehydration melting, reaching into a high temperature event. Uh, the granulate facies events have created biotic dehydration melting and uh, um, they have de developed leucosomes in Kerala content belt, and mostly they are stromatic migmatites, indicating as in situ nature of uh, and limited melt segregation within uh, the leucosome domain. Um, definitely, they have uh, with the stromatic migmatites, we can have a synchronous deformation event, um, and they have been recorded in uh, mesosome, melanosome. Also, this can be seen in the petrographic uh, um, fabric. And later stages of quartz of elspathic uh, pegmatitic dikes are also seen. They have brought, some of them have brought carbon dioxide rich fluids, uh, creating arrested charnakites. And in some cases, they are water rich. Uh, they have been intruded into the charnakite, creating a progressive metamorphism uh, or the pyrocene uh, breaking down into biotites and amphipoles. And these are the typical uh, massive type, the large scale charnakite exposures uh, seen in uh, Kerala Condylite Belt. They are actually looking like uh, fringing masses, large uh, hillocks in the uh, Nagar coal unit and in the northern region uh, along the Achinkovil side. Or uh, apart from that, we have got a cardamom massif. Uh, that is the separation line between Kerala Condylite Belt and the Madurai block. And they have got some of them have got um, uh, even within the Charnakite, uh, the deformation is prominent. Uh, it is almost showing the same kind of an Isaac fabric. Uh, um, this can be seen when you can see the uh, progress zones within the massive charnakates they are showing some nice fabric uh, along their margin and uh, the third package is metasedimentary sequence um, they are having wells up they are actually uh, they have undergone uh, much melting um, they are really fertile and they have undergone uh, partial melting creating a large scale leucosomes and uh, suppression of uh, melanosomes from them uh, their Nisic fabric is usually um, dominated by the garnet biotite, silimonite, coderite, uh, rich uh, mafic layers are defining the uh, Nisic fabric. And they are uh, um, showing stigmatic folding, um, ductile deformation in almost all places. Uh, this kind of a deformation pattern is seen. And um, when looking into their petrographic pro uh, characters, uh, we can see. Uh, the two distinct groups, like metagranates and uh, metatonalates, have their own uh, typical uh, petrographic uh, features. 
uh, metagranates, they have got homogeneous potassium rich uh, mes micro mesoperthites, uh, whereas uh, pot alkali feldspar uh, are the sodium rich alkali feldspar are the most prominent feldspar in metatronalites. And uh, metatronalites are uh, not showing much of uh, the ferromagnesium minerals uh, within them. Uh, even what, um, uh, we can have orthopyroxene in them, but uh, they are um, uh, relatively less in uh, other opaque minerals. Um, the model mineralogy suggests uh, we can have two broad groups over here. One is uh, really lying to the granodarite tronolite boundaries and another one um, along the uh, granitic domain. And compositional characters are distinct, uh, like uh, one is the uh, metagranates. You can see when we look into the uh, K2A, SAO2 versus K2O diagram, we'll, Harker diagram, we'll be seeing uh, granitic groups are rich in sodium. Uh, the tonalitic groups are uh, uh, having some uh, higher amount of, of Na2O in them. And uh, trace element characters are also having some characteristic features like uh, strontium. Uh, they have the metatonalites are having higher amounts of strontium where, where they are the metagrants are devoid of strontium. Uh, they are having much less strontium content compared to the meta uh, tonalites. And uh, the geochemical variations uh, suggest uh, the metagranates are mostly evolved type with a ferroven signature, whereas uh, the metatonalites are having a magnesian character, uh, less evolved compared to the metagranates. And uh, the modified alkali lime index also show two separate groups. Uh, for metatonalites and metagranates. The metatonalites are calc, uh, calcic to calc alkalic, whereas uh, alkali classic calcic signatures are more prominent in uh, metagranates. However, both these units, that is uh, really interesting, both these units are uh, possibly falling into an I-type environment. Both of them are having an infracrustal or intracrustal uh, derived granite signature. Um, they are having, both of them are having calc alkaline, a meta is to uh, weakly paraluminous signature, and uh, uh, the high K granites are really uh, uh, reaching into the Shoshonitic nature, whereas um, on the sodium rich varieties are medium K, which may be compared to uh, the uh, so called atacates um, like rocks. Then when we uh, look into the uh, Albeta and Ortho ortho place uh, classification scheme, uh, we can see uh, the tonalites are really to uh, the tronchamide tonalite uh, uh, evolutionary trend. And mostly they can be seen in the potassium, sodium, calcium uh, diagram. They, is, uh, they are really showing the uh, sodic trend of, of evolution, whereas a tron uh, not to the tronchamatic, but to the sodic trend of evolution, to the TTG type of magmatism for these uh, metatonalites, whereas uh, the Granitic uh, rocks are mostly uh, going through the cal calcaline trend of evolution. So uh, we are assuming we can uh, we can say the metatonalites show predominantly Archean TTG affinity, whereas the metagranites have got a post-Archean uh, granite affinity. This separation uh, from the main uh, protolith changing into a metagranite and a metatonalite may be uh, indicating some sort of uh, geodynamic setting for their evolution. And in the case of trace element signatures, uh, they are really contrasting in the case of metatonalites. Uh, they are uh, enriched in uh, large ion lithophile and uh, depleted in uh, uh, high field strength elements. Whereas the metagranates, they are having a similar uh, spirogram except for strontium and yttrium. Uh, they have got enrichment potassium, rubidium, barium, neodymium, uh, samarium, and uh, yttrium high spice for all these elements. And uh, again, a uh, marked depletion in uh, high field strength elements have been noticed uh, for neobium and titanium together with the strontium and phosphorus. And this is uh, really uh, giving some interesting results on the rare earth pattern. Uh, Metatonalites are having an enriched LRE compared to the HRE, whereas the HRE is having a uh, flattened pattern, the LRE is having an enriched pattern, but uh, when we compare both LRE and HRE, um, HRE is much depleted uh, compared to the light rare earth elements. Same kind of a trend is seen in the case of uh, metagranates also, but they show a conspicuous uh, uh, European negative anomaly, prominent European negative anomaly is uh, seen in the case of, uh, European is missing somewhere 
in the case of uh, uh, meta grants whereas some of these uh, meta tonally through a positive a slightly positive europium anomalies and when we geochemically model uh, them for their petrogenesis uh, where from they have um, developed or where from they have been extracted uh, there the metatronics are having significantly higher uh, strontium yttrium ratio uh, they are going to the arc in high ttg atakite fields and uh, they are matching with the uh, uh, melting of in a pre existing amphibolite garant amphibolite crust uh, which uh, gives rise to 10% 10 to 10% to 20% of melting uh, with the residue of uh, garnet and amphibolite and uh, whereas the meta granis that knows to have that much a high strontium uh, to yttrium ratio uh, they are showing uh, the pattern of uh, the modern day arc igneous rocks now uh, when we uh, uh, compile their geochemical model summarize their geochemical patterns we can see meta tonalites have low lyles larger than lithophiles they are having high potassium rubidium ratio uh, uncorrelated uh, uh, silica, strontium, yttrium, and uh, landan and uh, IV ratio with uh, positive strontium anomalies. Uh, here, in the case of metagranites, uh, we have uh, enriched potassium, rubidium, barium with lower amount of calcium, uh, sodium, and strontium. This uh, may be pro probably indicating a subduction zone signature. That kind of a subduction zone signature is not identified in the case of uh, metatonalites. So we may have to think about the uh, plagioclase fractionation versus partial melting process for metatronolite and metagranite uh, genesis. Now, uh, when we model about their uh, source rock, we can see both of them. All of them are usually going through what, uh, towards the amphibolite uh, parentage. In both cases, when we look through, uh, when we model them, we can see they have got um, affinity towards an amphibolite uh, parentage. Both of them are having the same kind of uh, uh, parentage. Uh, so partial melting, we can uh, we can suggest or we can say the metatonalites are partial melting products of garnet amphibolite or eclogate facies basaltic crust in the first stage. And the common pattern for uh, metatonalites and uh, metagranates suggest uh, uh, further magmatic differentiation from a common parental source for the genesis of uh, both these kind of magmatism. So now we may have to go for uh, their mineral chemical variation, how uh, the mineral chemistry show the same, whether they are showing the same kind of trend that we have observed in the geochemical pattern. So looking through the biotides, mostly they, we have got the primary biotides in them, in uh, many of them, which uh, shows uh, a continental R suit magmatic type biotide signature and calcalkaline signatures are uh, well uh, described in the biotite chemistry and uh, uh, definitely both of them are showing evolved granulates so they, they are not primary even the ttg what we are finding is as a metatonalite which is having a, a ttg affinity does not suggest they are primary ttgs but they are an evolved granitoid and we have modeled their uh, ptt evolution pressure temperature time path uh, uh, we have taken the later stages the final stages of assembly how to be uh, how they have been exhumed to the surface have been uh, modeled over here. Uh, the sequential mineral assemblage, what uh, we have selected for this kind of a study is garnet biotic orthopyroxene plagioclase uh, uh, quartz codierite bearing assemblage, which have got uh, melt domains within them. Some of the uh, plagioclase feldspar along with the quartz together, they have brought the melt domains in uh, codierite bearing assemblages. And these leucosomes have been well separated from the uh, nisosome and melanosome portions of uh, coterite biotite orthopyroxin bearing nices. Now, uh, they are having primary biotites uh, in the reactant phase. The bi biotite is, the, is in the reactant phase forming orthopyroxin bearing assemblages. Later, these orthopyroxin bearing assemblages have been during the exhumation, they have been hydrated and they have been uh, uh, on a rapid exhumation and uh, uh, decompression reaction have produced coterite into. Uh, they are mineralogy. And uh, we have also noted uh, uh, melt rusted back reactions, the partial dehydration of uh, rehydration of coderite, developing secondary biotides, smaller biotides, uh, bearing assemblages within the coderate uh, orthopyroxene bearing rock groups. And when we model the metamorphic uh, exhumation pattern and the, met met uh, the final stages of metamorphism and exhumation pattern, uh, we can see um, in the first initial conditions, uh, the rock have undergone. Uh, granulate facies 
ultra high temperature metamorphism with the peak temperatures of 900 degrees centigrade uh, that is indicated by the biotite orthopyroxy melt bearing assemblages in uh, some of the rocks and that must have been happened during the neoprotal cycle in, in the pan african time then uh, the estimated peak pressures when we compare the peak pressures with uh, the similar lithological units of uh, madurai blocks or salem blocks we can see uh, they are very much less uh, the, we are having six to seven kilobars as the maximum estimated pressure in these rocks when uh, we have 10 to 12 kilobars in some of the lithological units of uh, madurai block and uh, they have shown uh, the kkb have produced a clockwise pt path uh, uh, with uh, the post uh, peak isobaric cooling, the sudden exhumation to a sudden decompression path uh, generating the coderite bearing assemblages and uh, maybe due to the melt bearing assemblages have produced some rheological uh, inequilibration in the lower crust. We will see uh, what is the uh, rheological conditions in the lower crust during the melting event. And when we uh, made some calculations on the bulk density of the uh, rock based on their uh, silica content and co composition. Uh, we will be able to identify the metatonalates are having a 2.7 uh, gram per centimeter cube as the uh, bulk density, whereas the metagranates have got 2.4 gram per centimeter cube as their uh, bulk density. This uh, must be due to this bulk density variation must be due to the removal of uh, uh, a residual material, which is really um, higher denser. That uh, higher denser uh, material might have been founded back, and uh, this metatonalitic and metagranitic uh, magmas uh, might have ascended to the upper coastal regions or, or to the middle coastal regions. So, this should have been produced some gravitational instability in the newly accreted crust and the phase transformation that produced dense minerals like garnet or uh, eclogite, amphibolite, might have been gone as the residual phases, leaving behind. The metatonalitic and metagranitic or, or a magma which is parent to both this metatonalite and metagranite so we will see that what is the geodynamic evolution for these uh, two um, magmatic suits they are uh, matching in one phase uh, we will be able to identify pre-plate collision is uh, mostly uh, a magmatic uh, the geodynamic scenario for the magmatic evolution of uh, uh, metatonalite whereas uh, um, post collision, pre prepared collision to post collision upliftment uh, are the um, geodynamic scenario for uh, the granitic units. You can see it uh, very well here uh, syn collisional granites to a within plate or orogenic granite signatures for uh, the meta granite. So they have uh, different geodynamic uh, signatures. So the high temperature, low pressure metamorphism, and anatexis uh, might have happened in during crustal thickening or the lithospheric thinning. Both can be valid in our case. And uh, the thickening um, must be the within plate granite, the later stages of uh, uh, granite production must be uh, due to the thickening related to a collision event. It should be uh, happening in a collision event. Then only we can have this kind of a uh, geochemical signature and uh, uh, the orogenic granites. And the final stage uh, must be due to the rapid exhumation due to a modified rheology uh, melt enrichment of melt domain that might have modified the rheology of the lower crust and they have rapidly exhumed to the uh, lower crustal or to the middle crustal domains. And uh, when we look through the plagioclase, uh, the uh, role of plagioclase in both the rocks, we can see um, the Europe, prominent European anomaly in the case of uh, meta granates are indicative of uh, uh, the plagioclase might have been um, gone to their the source region where from they have undergone, they have developed as a melt. So when we look uh, uh, side by side with uh, metatonalites and metagranites, we can see that much of a um, fractionation, plagioclase fractionation is not visible in the case of uh, uh, metatonalites. Um, uh, uh, when we look into the differentiation index, the Sumeria European uh, ratio uh, increases uh, for the granitic uh, thing. That means different when the differentiation happens, um, the samarium and europium goes from uh, european goes from the granitic uh, melt to the uh, tonalitic or to the uh, residual material whatever is the, the uh, in the lower crust and uh, we can assume uh, the final stages of uh, granite production must be in a content arc accretion setting oh uh, we can 
create a uh, depict a cartoon illustrate a cartoon something like this we can see uh, this is the final stages where we can have a residual mafic crust uh, for which might have be uh, the source for both uh, uh, tonalitic and granitic gneisses from which uh, they have been uh, derived at different uh, geodynamic domain and uh, in the final stages what we are finding uh, as the potassium feldspar mega crystic uh, granites along the chinkoville suture zones are uh, the extruded pigmentite due to a modified uh, rheology that might that is why we are finding mostly the uh, coordinate bearing assemblages uh, in this uh, chinkoville region where a rapid exhumation or a, uh, a decompression how uh, rapid exhumation have developed a decompression in this uh, region. And when we compare uh, what we have seen in um, Kerala Condite Belt uh, with the uh, global models uh, on the protocols development and crystal evolution, uh, the same kind of scenario, almost all similar kind of scenario can be observed. In the early earth, uh, the pre-tectonic uh, domain, what we have is a drip tectonic domain where the uh, mafic residual crust are foundering back into the mantle uh, when a basaltic underplating or a heat uh, dominant feature um, underplates below this uh, early formed crust and uh, they undergo partial melting, leaving a plagioclase uh, rich uh, magma. When they are extracting a plagioclase rich magma, the remaining crust uh, starts dripping back. And later uh, in the plate tectonic domain, uh, that will be changing into a subduction domain. Uh, that lithosphere undergoes um, from a flatter subduction to a steeper subduction. Uh, that has been modeled by Nebel and co in 2018. We can, what we can see is uh, the geochemical patterns are similar. Uh, during this uh, drip kind of a tectonics, this can produce the uh, original Archean TTG. The uh, early Archean TTGs will be forming over here. And later, these TTGs will be undergoing when they start for deeper uh, dripping and uh, starts for subduction uh, in an asymmetric dripping domain. It may undergo TTG melt may uh, interact with the peridotite and it may create uh, the later granites, uh, the younger adequate uh, like uh, TTGs in the uh, later stages. And uh, the lithospheric evolution model, again from the Kavud model, uh, we can see the 3,200 million years. We don't have that uh, um, subduction domain where we have TTG genesis on the small wavelength mantle above the small wavelength mantle convection, which is the heat source over here, creating TTG melts and which starts the foundering of uh, the residual mafic crust. And this process may go. Uh, eventually leading to during uh, decreasing the mantle temperature uh, there will be large wavelength mantle convection because um, the mantle temperature is uh, becoming uh, lesser and lesser so uh, the temperature will be coming from the um, core mantle boundary regions so it will create a large wavelength mantle convection and, and the present day uh, stable cratonic uh, segments cratonization uh, subduction scenario will be starting from this one uh, the pre-plate tectonics domain, uh, domain, we can see uh, the dripping tectonics later changing into a subduction tectonics in the 2500 millions of time, uh, creating into the dripping domains. Uh, probably we can say these are the early stages where high temperature Archean mantle does not allow subduction of material back into the mantle. We can say this is in horizontal subduction or the flat subduction model. And later they may must be uh, in a, uh, due to the changes in Archean or in the protozoic mantle temperatures this, that have been changed into a uh, deeper or steeper subduction domain. And uh, during these changes in the subduction styles, we can see uh, the model uh, geochemical patterns are also different. Uh, the Archean felsic continental crust uh, uh, must be the earlier thing, Marfi crust changing into, with the residual plagioclase changing into a, a older TTG intrusions uh, with the high, uh, Sodium and potassium, uh, which might have been on a lower pressure condition, low strontium, uh, low LAYB ratio. This all indicate uh, uh, steeper subductions are not possible. This must have been formed in a uh, horizontal or a flat subduction type of uh, tectonic domain. Then um, that must be giving rise to residual garnite uh, uh, rich amphibolite or ecologetic residues. And more younger TTGs will be forming over there. These younger TTG. Uh, will be later 
undergoing remelting within the intracrustal region within the crustal domain lower crustal region uh, this must have been uh, reworked or uh, that might have undergone partial melting producing the late stages of uh, arcane crustal progeny granites uh, the progeny granites are actually not from the mandible derived they have been formed from the younger uh, the ttgs which have created the early protocrust and uh, on a final phase we can see the ttgs uh, changing into stage 1 melting and mixing probably in this case the sanicutoid type of uh, magmatism uh, or that kind of a signature can be seen but usually in the time this going through um, uh, an event of underplating and which will be creating a transitional ttg dike and later this uh, uh, this old ttg package will be changing into um, metatonalitic and uh, potassic uh, uh, magmas of what we are finding in the present day situation and on when we summarize the old things the tectonic evolution model we can summarize it uh, something like uh, we have got an initial stage of flat subduction of a hot lithosphere uh, uh, probably by basaltic underplating or short uh, mantle convection currents mantle uh, convection centers uh, due to the high temperature upper mantle regions in the new archean time around the 3.73 to 2.89 uh, sorry 2.73 to 2.89 and billions of years time this must have formed the precursor ttg material the, uh, uh, the primary ttg materials might have been formed from a mafic crust over uh, this time this must have been uh, because they are enriched in plagioclase uh, domains the uh, steeper subductions were not possible or we cannot assume a steeper subduction the plagioclase uh, they are formed in the plagioclase uh, stable domains uh, without uh, much pressure uh, without much higher temperature and they have been progressively changed into this uh, uh, flat subduction domain have been changed into progressively into a steeper subduction uh, due to arc accretion in the paleoproterozoic 1.8 so the uh, metatonalitic uh, whatever we are finding as the crystallization age of metatonalites may be an indication of uh, flat subduction one side is a set of uh, geodynamic scenario and when we come to the paleoproterozoic uh, uh, we can find the granites Uh, formed in a steeper subduction domain. Uh, the, this is an ACP type granite uh, that arcane uh, crustal progeny granites, which might have been formed by intracrustal melting and magmatic differentiation within the uh, crustal domain. And in the final phases, uh, the last stage of KKB evolution uh, can be easily synchronized, or it can be as, uh, assigned with the exhumation of the rheologically modified crust due to uh, the high temperature melting in. Uh, and formation of uh, potassium feldspar megacrystic granitoids and uh, this this is a time frame for uh, the development of uh, uh, coderate bearing assemblages and uh, which indicates a, a faster rate of exhumation or a, a sudden decompression uh, from the lower crustal regions and uh, that is about uh, what i have to mention and uh, with this i may say uh, what uh, uh, more can be done uh, in this uh, uh, particular of uh, precambrian granulate facies domain especially uh, we need more on um, the uh, structural aspects uh, we have got a documentation of accretion and collision tectonics uh, along the chenkovil shear zone uh, so that uh, we may have to work more on to uh, confirm whether uh, we can bring uh, some good evidence for early earth tectonic process uh, from this uh, southern indian terrain and uh, another interesting feature is the compositional variations in the southern indian uh, magmatic records that is again uh, we assume this is another indicator for initiation and changes in the geodynamics in the planet from a steeper to uh, sorry a flatter to steep subduction uh, domain change might have been recorded elsewhere in the globe we can uh, also compare with elsewhere in the globe uh, on the ttg to granite transition may be an indication of uh, Uh, from the same protolith that also to be mentioned from the same protolith living in garnet uh, ecologic residue may be an indication of uh, the geodyne changes in the geodynamic setting and uh, the isotopic set setting uh, the especially lutetium half lithium how to be done more here uh, so that you know what is uh, what has happened the mandel evolution and that has been attempted so far uh, there are only few studies uh, that uh, that is uh, yet to be combined with the structural aspects as well as uh, the petrological aspects and definitely the, uh, i invite uh, the in situ uh, high resolution isotope geochronology people 
uh, to have more studies from this terrain uh, where we can find uh, the process leading into differentiation of Earth in relation to different geodynamic scenario in the RK time. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Srijit. Uh, now the session is open for discussion. I think uh, Professor Dilip okay. Mukhopadhyay has to say something, yes? Yeah? You showed the finger or not? Do you want to comment on this? Okay, uh, two comments, Sir. Really. Uh, no serious question. I'm Dilip Mukhopadhyay. Sir, I know, sir. Thank you. Uh, so first thing about your regional geology, you have three blocks. Yes, sir. And I wonder what are the block boundaries? I mean, on what basis you define them separate blocks? Uh, that's one thing that um, would be nice for people who are not into this area okay, uh, for so. them to understand. It would be useful for people like me who is <laughs> <laughs> to so understand. Shall I, okay, so uh, shall I go to that uh, slide? Okay, sure, sure. Okay, sir. Um, sir, uh, here we have three blocks uh, because earlier it is uh, something like the uh, above the Palakkad Kaveri shear zone uh, to the uh, firmer line, the Orthoparex in Isograd, the entire region have shown uh, metamorphism in the Archean time. So that is the first concept of uh, classifying that into a separate block, and uh, uh, the rest of uh, whatever is there in the Palakkad Kaveri shear zone were considered as a Neo Proterozoic metamorphic domain. It was the earlier uh, view of classification. Uh, later on, people have identified uh, these have got, with, even within uh, the Palkat Kaveri shear zone up to the Nagarogal Massif, there are changes in uh, magmatic styles. Uh, the timing of magmatism is different. There are separate imprints of metamorphism. Uh, usually, we have mostly Pan African in the, uh, they are almost all previous uh, imprints have been um, overwritten by the pan-african in the case of uh, uh, kkb and again uh, this is a uh, mostly condolite rich domain that kind of a condolite uh, rich domain is missing over here this is hornblende biotite whereas hornblende domain is missing here hornblende is not much prominent but we whatever we are having in the high grade glandulates are uh, orthoperoxine here also orthopyroxine bearing assemblages are there. Again, their chemistry is different. Uh, here we have both metatonolite, metagranitoid type, uh, metagranitic type uh, um, granites, whereas here mostly they are uh, tonalitic in nature. And in the case of uh, uh, along the PCS, then Palkan Kaveri shear zone and above, we have uh, mafic and ultramafic complexes that is again missing over here. So the this uh, PC Palakkad Kaveri shear zone now it is being identified as a suture zone again Achengoville shear zone that is also being identified as a suture a collisional uh, arc accretion and later collisional suture have been identified uh, along uh, both these uh, domains so that is one of the basic uh, assumption now they can be classified into different uh, uh, crustal domains sir. Uh, I just um, for people who are not initiated to literature of this terrain. Okay, I would have liked on this map kind of a boundary of the different blocks. And uh, for understanding purpose, I'm not saying what you said okay, is wrong. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm saying for understanding purpose, for the people who are not initiated into South Indian yeah, okay, geology, so. if you had drawn the boundaries of the Salem block, Madurai block, and KKV block, it would have been easier for many people to understand. Surely, sir. Surely, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, you go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, actually, we, we are fixing the boundary along the PC, Palakkad Kaveri shear zone. One boundary from Salem to uh, the Madurai block, the boundary is being identified as Palakkad Kaveri shear zone. 
uh, lying uh, starting from Panani up to uh, Chennai side. No, that's Sorry. all right. That's that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Just for the people who okay, are okay, not, yeah, yeah. yeah. I should if you have drawn the boundaries, sure, sure, maybe sure. in a separate Thank map, you. separate map, mm -hmm. and then you have listed. Uh, if you had listed that on the basis of this, the blocks have been different. Surely, surely. It would sure. have been understandable for many people. Okay, I will take care of that, sir. Thank okay. you. And secondly, uh, I would have preferred to see a kind of. You have shown the ages, which have uh, quite a long history. You know? Yes, sir. I mean, very long duration of the. Of the timing from for the KKB, and from that, if you had shown correlation between emplacement, metamorphism, along with the ages, okay, right? say you three thousand million years, you notice this, uh, this is condolite or whatever rocks and okay. deformation. Then say two two point five to two point three, then at this time, emplacement of some rock and then deformation. Like that, a tabular form also okay. would have made things easier for many people. Surely, sir. I'm sorry I missed that, sir. Mm -hmm. No, it's all right. So next time you do it. Yeah, yeah, surely, it. surely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have written down, sir. I will note down. Yeah. The main purpose of okay. giving you talk is is that people should understand, you know. Yes, sir. And these things are just to make people understand. I'm not saying anything that you said is wrong. Or I have a criticism of anything. No, 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 sir. Yes, for, this, yes, for, yeah, uh, I, I, for, yeah. Thank you, thank you for that comment, sir. Well, this is a mixed crowd, you know. Yeah, some sure. people here are purely structural geology. Some people do geoanatomy. Some people do structural geology along with metamorphism. Yeah. And so it would be easier for majority of the people to understand what you are saying. Surely, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dilipda, uh, for your suggestion. So I think uh, Dr. Abhinavarai has uh, some queries or suggestions. Abhinavarai, please. Hello. Yeah, sir. I can. Yeah, uh, you are audible. Uh, nice, uh, very sophisticated uh, uh, data you presented on the chemistry, isotope geology. I, mean, I was more interested about the structures. Anyhow, rightly, Achanka will see her zone. You are telling. I recently also associated. I wanted to see the map recently prepared. Particularly the myelonides, its planar and linear features and their interpretations. Uh, sir, uh, I missed that map actually. I am sorry for that. Uh, the recent findings is uh, something like uh, uh, the magmatism, uh, mainly, mainly based on uh, the arc uh, magmas, have interpreted them as uh, a suture. No, as Professor Mukhopadha rightly said, it the different blocks you have put it on based yeah. on the preconceived ideas. Question is the recent studies whether we have added or modified or rejected some of the blocks bounded by these shears. But there are many more shears. I like to learn from your recent studies the what is the really boundary between the different blocks distinguishing as you have perceived, even conceived. Particularly, watch it, for example, one of the things I am talking about. Palghat Kaveri also similarly, like these things. Many of the things need to be revisited. There are, I'm not contesting about the existence of them, but question is their tectonics. They were evolution histories. That's a very important thing. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, we may need more structural studies on, uh, uh, particularly along the shear zones. Uh, whatever studies, what uh, I have presented is based on uh, mostly on the geochemical data and I sort of this, uh, structural yeah. studies is not an ornamental studies structure yes. is the basics for yes, understanding sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. thank you thank you sir thank you dr roy uh, anybody uh, to uh, comment Sujith, uh, yeah. i have yeah. uh, i have several problems uh, with your presentation sir firstly you mentioned about the model ages and the crystallization ages. Yes, sir. The model, uh, how is the crystallization age determined? That is uh, on uh, circon, uh, uh, single circon um, EPMA, or uh, uh, some of them are what sims and uh, um, sims ages, and uh, some of them are I have been uh, taken from literature, sim ages also have been. You have so many different types of uh, granites, yes, but sir. your ages, you have not tied up with the different petrographic types. 
there is no no information on from which rock the age data came okay okay sir so that is one point from problem uh, that i uh, find in understanding your thing and secondly when you discuss the plate uh, tectonic models the models yes, you have discussed the drip tectonics and the changing of what into the subduction sir. they are all of them are based on a primary oceanic crust that is a mafic crust definitely where sir. is the mafic crust in your area or in the entire south indian granulite belt is there any remnant of the oceanic crust in in kkb sorry sir not uh, not reported in kkb but uh, only few uh, o'clock it or uh, okay. how can you how can you apply a model based on the gravity sinking of a mafic crust to an essentially continental crust is sir, it logically permissible uh, sir yes, uh, i i uh, request you to think about this uh, surely sir surely surely that sir. how you can apply this model about a mafic crust sinking density sinking of the mafic crust to a continental environment and secondly uh, the achankoville shear zone i remember there were some structural work done on achankoville shear zone which suggested that it is a transcurrent shear zone strikes the fault and that is also tie, tied up with the similar strikes the fault in the mozambique belt so if it is a strikes the fault then how does can it, uh, does this fit with your subduction model oh mostly because uh, the subduction models in southern india it is a very difficult thing because we have got a polymetamorphic terrain Uh, which have undergone uh, multiple changes of metamorphism and magmatism. So, uh, in the in each first one, the mafic crust model we have uh, reached in such a way that um, the TTG genesis and their isotopic signatures are suggesting of uh, the mafic mafic crust must have been a residual one, which might have been removed from uh, the proto TTG crust. So, uh, that is one of the uh, thing what we can. Uh, Think over that, but uh, definitely we don't have any mafic crust over here. We don't. We are not able to see anything uh, except for the Manamudo fiolite. We don't have much of uh, mm. the oceanic crust signatures in but the, South India. But the oh. diagram that you have shown, but the okay. diagram that you have shown, the yes. cartoons, they yeah. all had mafic crust on one side. So that does not fit with the actual geology. but uh, sorry sir sorry to say that uh, the ngri uh, have done a good uh, geophysical mapping yes, and uh, you think about yeah. you don't uh, i don't want uh, to uh, uh, surely sir i'm just suggesting uh, okay, sir, you okay, sir. We, yeah we can we have to be on through sir yeah sir sir can i can sir can i sir can i ask uh, dr sujit yes. to display the model uh, slide here so that people will understand okay more. okay yes sir that we what that we are discussing now yes yes sir now, this one sir or next one i think next one next one yes yeah this is the uh, this is ttg forming from the sinking of a mafic mare mafic crust mafic yes sir yeah that green one and the violet one yes sir yeah this is the gravitational sinking of this uh, model mafic i am just uh, requesting uh, dr srijit to think about surely sir the logical uh, application of such a model to a continental plane and finally one question uh, yes, did, did you attempt to determine the pressure temperature and tie tie the tie that uh, data with the texture of the rock uh, surely sir uh, there are there are actually two pt estimation there are two kinds of pt estimation one uh, we have got uh, uht type uh, near uht type metamorphism 
uh, that is in the Paleoproterozoic. Uh, and in the Neoproterozoic, this is actually a um, rapid exhumation scenario where decompression uh, that has been done on codialite bearing mm -hmm. assemblages. So they have got a, a rapid exhumation type of a scenario. No, I was uh, uh, I was uh, curious about what is the exact chemical parameters of the minerals from which the PT is determined. That is uh, based on FEMG exchange between OPX, orthoperoxin, and biotite. One of them. Mm. Okay. 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 Thank you, yes, sir. I, I have no more questions. Thank you, sir. Excuse Anyone me. Ready? Oh, yes, sir. Please go ahead. The FEMG exchange will give you temperature. Will it give you pressure? The guarantee is also there, sir. Garnet uh, uh, barometry. So you, you did separately. Garnet barometry. Bar garnet with what assembly? Garnet biotite OPX. Uh -huh. so you did simultaneously two separate. <coughs> one for geothermometer, one for geobarometer, is that right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, okay. what Professor Mukhopadhyay was saying is, I wish to emphasize again that when you have this kind of uh, studies, sir. you should put everything in the perspective of the ages that you have determined, or dates you have determined. Okay. The yeah. particular date crystallization of say TTG. This particular age is for emplacement of say uh, tonalite. Yes. And this particular age is for metamorphism of tonalite and so on and so forth. So okay. once you once you show that in a tabular form, okay. in a table form, then much yeah. of the confusions will disappear. I'm sorry for that, sir. No, no, Definitely, yeah, yeah. Learn. I will do that. We all, in the next we all learn, time. right? We all yeah, learn. Sure, your sure, age, yeah. Yeah, at your age, I would not think about all this. But with yeah. age, I have learned all this. Because the main purpose is to make people understand. Sure, Otherwise, sure. they will ask a lot of questions. Sure. Which will, explaining things in, uh, in language can be sometimes difficult. Pictorial is much more easy. Okay. Uh, we remember picture, not... Uh, not uh, yes, sir. Uh, that is our human nature, human brain. Yes, is sir, surely, yeah. We remember picture. Thank you, Satyashri. Also, when you make dates, please yeah. please tell people what rock you have dated. Okay. Yeah. That is very important, very crucial. Like you have uh, uh, you have uh, migmatite, say, you have paleosome, yes. melanosome. The date whether you dated the paleosome or the melanosome. Or if okay. you have a exotic rock blocks, you know, a typical of your life, mm -hmm. and then you have to tell people which rock which part of that uh, fuel at complex we have data. These are crucial. These are very, very crucial. Things. Yes, sir. I will not doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Professor Mondol, do you have any suggestion for Dr. Sati, uh, Sajid? Uh, no, I don't think I have any suggestion, any additional suggestion. Professor Dhruva Mukhopadhyay, has extensively pointed out mm. uh, different aspects while using certain standard model to one field study. Uh, it has to be uh, mechanically, dynamically, and yes. geologically well integrated. So I think he has rightly uh, very discussed uh, on a critical mode. I think Srijit should take this all these things. Totally yeah. Thank you. I enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Any more qu uh, queries? Um, sir, uh, I have a small query, sir. Oh, please go ahead. Yes. Uh -huh. Dr. Srijit, actually, um, somewhere I have read uh, that the thickness of the Achankoville shear zone that um, separates the Madurai block and the Trivandrum block, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> that is variable from your northwest to southeast. It is uh, around I think 12 kilometers in the northwestern direction and around 21 kilometer uh, in the uh, your southeast direction. Yes. So, uh, so is there any possible explanation for this kind of a variation? I don't know. Means uh, that's why I'm asking. Uh, well, 
later people are uh, like uh, structural geology people or uh, the geodynamic people were suggesting it something like uh, uh, first uh, north uh, uh, north east uh, mo movement was there in the Chengo, along the kkb to the chingo side then okay. it uh, it has gone into uh, collision event final stages of collision event then the yes. transmission transmission type of tectonics uh, widening at one end and uh, short uh, shortening at other end hmm, 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 hmm. Anyway, uh, I have not uh, verified it or I have not uh, um, really gone to that. I may have to learn more on that. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Actually, I read somewhere uh, in yeah, some okay. paper. Yeah. Oh, that's why I just... Thank you. Okay. So, uh, any more queries from the audience? Young people? If, if there is no more queries, then I must uh, uh, congratulate Dr. Sajid and we must give him a, a whole round of applause. Uh, with a big Thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity, actually. <laughs> nice, no, good. And I, I hope uh, this, will, this will help you in, sure, in your sir. thought process as well. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> So thank you very much for uh, thank you very much to everyone for attending this monthly uh, okay, has so, gone uh, uh, yeah so uh, uh, thank Sorry. you once again dr srijit uh, for your time uh, uh, and for enlightening us about the uh, tectonics of the condolite belt and we would like to hear more from you in future as well okay thank you thank you so much thank you thank you all and i request before i before i leave i request everyone to book your ticket for sure, yes, sir. right, sir. right. <laughs> yeah.